my mask on. John, my mask is just a tad bit prettier. Y'all see this one? Cuddy, take a look. now don't we but God's going to take care of us
cube. Try to fix this real quick. Haggai hey, chapter 2, that's where we were at last week. So if you work from the book of um, Matthew backwards, a couple books, you'll find the book of Haggai. Hey, and um, if you'll turn there this morning, Haggai hey, chapter 2. Verses 5 through 7 is where we're going to be. I'll give you a few seconds to find it. Haggai chapter 2. Now let me give you a little bit of the background uh, of Haggai. The, the Israelites have been carried away to captivity. They have now been returned back. And in Haggai, they have uh, they've sort of gotten comfortable. They've forgotten the things of God. And, and he's dealing with them about his house being uh, being uh, let go. The, the ruination of the house of God. And so... They've gotten comfortable uh, in their lifestyle. They've gotten comfortable with the things that are going on. And so 
God begins to deal with them about getting back on purpose. And today we want to talk about sometimes uh, in life, God has to shake things up with us uh, in order to, um, to get us back on track. Haggai chapter 2, when you have that, let's uh, read it together. You don't have to stand, but let's read it together. Haggai chapter 2 verse 5 says, This is what I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt. And my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, while I, uh, in a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. And so, let's pray together. Father, speak to our hearts. Let us hear your word and yours alone. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So here this, these folks, the Israelites had gotten comfortable. They were allowing God's house to remain in ruin. Their life had gotten sort of just uh, complacent. They had forgotten about the things of God. And we know that what's going on in our world today has, has sort of been a shaking. And I don't believe God caused it, but God can use the things that are happening in our world today to do a shaking. And I, look at what's going on in our world. Things are shaking up. Uh, people have lost jobs. People have uh, been laid off. The stock market's up and down. People's jobs and financial situations have been shaken up. And, and, and uh, you know, we've realized how far away from God we've gotten. I don't know if all the people of the nation have realized how far away from God we have gotten. But it ought to be a, a wake-up call to all of us to return to God, to get closer to God. Uh, that we realized that things uh, that uh, we thought were, uh, that we had in control of, that we don't control as much as we thought we did. Uh, life happens quick, folks. Uh, health situations arise, and lose, loss of jobs, and all these things remind us of how little in control of this thing that we are. While we're on this ball that's turning or, or moving as fast as it does, we have to realize that our job is to trust God in every season of our life. And so I want to remind you this morning that God has a plan for us in spite of trouble. Now, our world's in trouble today, amen? Our world's in a mess. This COVID virus, you know, you can't, people are getting sick and and then you listen to what the, the, some of the experts are saying, that this is just part of the first wave, and, and later on in the year there may be a second wave of this. And, and uh, it is, uh, they found out that it is mutated, that the original has mutated. And then you listen to other stuff coming down the line. In China now is another form of swine flu that has started. And it is the researchers believe that it is even more deadly to humans than the last strain of swine flu. You listen to other stuff that's happening in the world. There has been a plague of locusts that has swept across the Middle East that has devoured millions and millions of locusts that have devoured crops in a, in a little bit of a, of a minute or two. Hundreds of acres of crops have been gone because of this swarm of locusts. Uh, just recently, now we missed out on it a little bit because some of the... Uh, Low pressure and stuff in the atmosphere changed it. But just recently, there was a, 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 a dirt storm that blew across the ocean. And part of the Carolinas and that stuff uh, 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 got... Part of, <laughs> you ever one of them days where just your head works faster than your tongue? Yeah. This is today. This is today. Part of the Carolinas got that dirt storm that blew all across the ocean. I mean, things are happening. Things are happening at a rapid disease. Uncertainty. Uncertainty today about when school will start back. You notice in Harrison County, they've said, I believe it's like August the 24th or something like that, but they keep reiterating tentatively. Tentatively. Because things could happen. Many people today, I notice, are focused on the book of Revelation and all the things that the prophecy of the book of Revelation has. Are we headed towards the tribulation? Some wonder, are we in the tribulation? But remember that God uses trouble. Doesn't always cause trouble, but He uses trouble. His Spirit always abides in us. No matter what you're facing this morning, 
no matter what you're going through personally, and we all gather here, whether we're on the lawn or in the parking lot, we all gather here today and we have our own set of issues. Now, we might put a good face on it and walk up through here and act like everything's all right, but all of us, if we're honest, have things that we're dealing with, things that we're fighting, issues that we're going through. Remember that God's Spirit is always in you. If you're a believer, if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Spirit of God lives within you. He's promised that He'll never forget us, even in the midst of turmoil. You ever been a place in your life where you're going through trouble and you felt like God was a million miles away? Have you ever been there? And even though He feels that way, <clears throat> God will never forget us. And remember that He's always right there. Even though the world's going through a shaking right now, even though the world is going through difficulty at the moment, God is still always there for those who love Him. And sometimes God uses shakings, things that happen, circumstances to draw us closer to Him. And being drawn closer to God means that there will be some moments of shakings that are either uh, are intentional and purposeful. God can use difficult times to draw you closer to Him. Shakings that draw you closer to His life. What is a shaking that happens? A shaking is usually, uh, uh, let, me put it, let me read it this way. Shaking from God is usually something unexpected that disrupts life. Have you ever been there? Something unexpected that dip, disrupts life. I've often told you when I came here, uh, on, can you believe that in a couple of months I'll be have been with you all for six years? Some of y'all are saying, thank God. John's clapping. Some of y'all think, good Lord, we, we, ain't got him. <laughs> we ain't got rid of him in six years. What in the world are we going to do? God uses shakings. I would have been here with you all without a shaking. It's unex and it was a, the shaking that happened to us was unexpected, and it disrupt life. But can I tell you that the shaking to get us here, I'd do it again a thousand times to end up in this spot right here. Do it a thousand times. Shakings are usually from God. Uh, from God usually uh, is usually something unexpected that disrupts life. We need a shaking in America to bring us back and prioritize Him. Look at Colossians 1.18 for just a minute. Colossians 1.18. <clears throat> New Testament, Colossians 1.18. Listen to what we... Um, what Paul describes Jesus Christ as. 118 of Colossians. He's the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. Read, let me read that again. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead. Now listen to this. So that in everything, everybody say everything. In everything he might have supremacy. That means in our lives, God wants supremacy. That means that when we're at work, God wants supremacy. In all things in the church, God wants supremacy. God's not taking second fiddle to anybody, ladies and gentlemen. God is the beginning. He's the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. And God has made a determination that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And he is the supreme. He has supremacy in all things. And he wants our lives to recognize the fact that we're not dependent on anything any other thing except the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the supreme. Does he have, let me ask it this way, does he have supremacy in your life? Now think about that for just a minute. Because the easy answer is to say, oh yeah, yeah, God's got supremacy. That's the easy answer, and that's the answer that most of us as Christians would make. But let's think through that for just a minute. In our decision making, do we consult God? Do we wait on God 
to make a decision until he speaks to us. When we go to say something, does God have supremacy? Or do when we hear the Spirit of God speaking to us saying, don't say that, don't say that, we still speak it anyways. See, supremacy of ha uh, having God's supreme in our life is more than just getting up going to church on Sunday morning. Giving Him supremacy in our life means that the other six days of the week, He directs our lives. He, he, uh, he guides our decision. He, uh, he, uh, he, uh, we listen to His voice and uh, uh, he, uh, he speaks to us. And we listen before we make a decision. We listen before we make something, uh, make a, an important way, a decision of life. We listen to his voice to say, God, is this of you or God, am I doing my own thing? In every decision that we make, we are to ask ourselves, is this the will of God for our lives? That's supremacy. That's allowing God to be supreme. Now, I want you to remember this, and if you, ain't, if, you, if you got something to write this down, write this down. God will shake us. God will shake us when we are not, or when He is not, our priority. Remember, let me say that one more time. God will shake us when He is not our priority. Best way I can describe this is a personal example. In 2003, I was living on top of the world, or at least I thought I was. I was making more money than I ever had made in my life. Made some decisions that I was going to do my own thing in some in some situations. Went and looked at a at a forty thousand dollar pickup truck. Drove off that lot, and didn't buy it because something just didn't feel right. I was going to church and serving God and doing all those things. I was even preaching, but still, I I thought in my my own mind that I was a self made man. I was a young guy. Doing my, you know, living life, doing my own thing. Thought that, you know, I, I had the, the future by the tail. I was making all the money in the world that I'd ever made before. And for as far as I could see, it was it was going to be that way for years and years and years and years. That was 2003. And in January of 2004, our world crumbled. With what I was told to be a simple back surgery. January of 2004 turned up my uh, turned our worlds upside down until to this day is still affecting our world. God shook us. And we've learned through that shaking. Listen to me. We've learned through that shaking that God is our resource, not us. All we get up and go to work and do what we're supposed to do, but you realize how quickly all that stuff can be taken away from you. Wake up one morning and have a health problem, and all that stuff that you thought was yours and you know can be taken away from you. Hey, hey, Sonny, you know what I'm talking about. Just like that, bam, it's gone. But God will show you, in the midst of a shaking, whatever it is, that if you trust Him, He will get you. And I'm going to tell you through all that. I can tell, stand here and testify to this day that my life and our life as a family has been has been much more blessed by being on God, dependent on God than it ever was depending on ourselves. God has blessed us in ways we can't even begin to think or imagine, but sometimes he uses shakings to get us back uh, on track when he is not 100% all the time our priority. God wants supremacy over everything all the time. He wants supremacy over your life. He wants supremacy over your time. He wants supremacy over your money. He wants supremacy over your decisions. He wants supremacy over everything. And God sometimes will use shakings. And sometimes he'll shake us when he's not our priority. And I believe God is using this virus in this day to try to shake America awake. 
that we're close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see ever I see listen to people on the radio trying to, to say that we're in the tribulation and it's and we're close and try to predict days or times. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says no man knows the days or the time, but we are to know the season. And we look at the season, and there's no doubt we're living in the season of the last days. And there's going to be a day before long when we least expect it. Jesus Christ is going to split the eastern sky. He's going to step out. He's going to call the dead in Christ. And the graves, these old graves are going to burst open, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then all of us that are in Jesus are going to rise up out of this old world and disappear from here. And we're going to be with Jesus forever. The end of this thing is wrapping up. It's getting close to being over. And God is trying to shake the world. This virus doesn't just uh, mess with America. It has messed with the whole world. Those locusts didn't just mess with one country. It's messing with the whole world. We got things going on today that is telling us that this thing is wrapping up and it's time to get right, to get on our knees, to get serious about this thing because we're going to wake up one morning and if we're not right with God, half of all the population is going to be gone and we're going to wonder what happened. And God has been sending us the sign the whole time. And God will shake us. You say, I don't want to be shaped. But I want to tell you this morning that when we get off track, when we just go through the motions, when we go to church, but we're not the church, God will shake us. Don't fear the shaking of God. Take the shaking of God as a wake-up call. That he's telling us to get back on track. He's using this thing to tell the church in America it's time to wake up. It's time to start witnessing and telling people that there's hope. It's time to tell folks in our neighborhoods and on our workplaces and all the places that we are going that time is running out. You all remember that, uh, that soap opera? That had the sand glass. What was the name of that? Anybody remember? Well, a lot of y'all watch soap operas, don't you? <laughs> Stays of our life. Uh, like sands through the hourglass. Is that how it went? Yep. So are the days of our lives. Well, you think about that. Not the soap opera, but you think about the hourglass. And the sand running out of it. That's what we're doing today, folks. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. We're getting closer every day. You say, well, I don't think we're going to, it's going to happen in our lifetime. Well, if it doesn't happen in our lifetime, honey, we are running out of time. I was thinking the other day. I was talking to somebody to work. January, I have been at UK for 27 years. And it seems like yesterday I started. September, my son will be 15. December, my daughter will be 19. Hope is going to college. Isaiah is already in college. It seemed like yesterday. Billy Ray, one of my deacons at Macedonia, come and got me and said, Preacher, look outside here. I said, what is it? He said, come out here, look at this. And Isaiah was on the top of, of Brandy's car, on, on the top of it, the hood, not the hood, but the roof. And he was jumping up and down just as hard as he could jump. He said, look at it, look at this. He was just thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And he, I don't know how old he was, five, six or seven, something like that. Hope was about four, or I mean. Isaiah was about four and Hope was in a car seat. And look at them. Look how quick this is gone. Hope, hope you're going to college. Where are you headed out to? When you when are you leaving? August, she's leaving to go to Penn State. Right? Is that what you said? Lynchburg? Well, wherever she's going. I ain't hear none of that. She's going off to college. She was just being in a car seat the other day. Jesus may not come back in our lifetime, ladies and gentlemen, but our sand glass 
is running out. How many of you all right now can remember when you was a kid? Let me see your hands. Running, playing, doing all those things. And now you look in the mirror and you say, my God, how quickly have I gotten here? So whether or not Jesus comes back in our lifetime is, 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 is important, but it's not the main issue because if he doesn't come back in our lifetime, we're going to leave here. And if you look at your life, it happens quicker. <laughs> like that. Blows by so quick. So Haggai says that God said, I'm going to shake things up. I'm going to shake things up. Colossians says that Jesus Christ is the head of everything. So let me ask you, is he the head of your life? God may need to shake you up today to get you back on track. Get back on track before you have to be shaken. But let me give you this piece of advice. If he shakes you, he'll never shake you hard enough that he won't be there to hold you in the midst of the shaking. Trust him with your life. America needs to get back on track. America needs to get back on track. God never called us to break the law. God never called us to bust windows. God never called us to burn down things. God never called us to hurt people. God never called none of that. But that's what's going on in the world today. And I will promise you some of those people that are doing those things will claim themselves to be Christians. God never called us to do any of that. He called us to trust Him. America's being shaken. But sometimes God shakes us too. And so in closing, let me ask you this. I got a lot more notes, but I'm going to leave it at this this morning. What part of your life do you need to get back with God being the supreme part of your life? Now you might have Him supreme in some areas, but what are all the areas that you think about that I'm making decisions without ever consulting God? I'm doing things without ever thinking about God in the midst of this. I'm living in a way that if God were to show up, it would dishonor God. We've got to think about these things, especially in the day in which we're living. And that's what had happened to the Israelites. God had delivered them from captivity. And when they got back from captivity, they got comfortable. And I would say to you this morning, we've gotten comfortable in America. Would you agree with that? We've gotten comfortable in America. We've taken the church for granted. Well, we can always go. Well, you found out this year that that's not always true. Did you think at the beginning of 2020 that we would go through a stretch that we couldn't even hearken the doors of the church or that you would be sitting out in the lawn at this point of, the, of, the, the, of this history of the church? Did you ever think at the beginning of 2020 we'd see this? No, none of us did. So we've taken for granted the ability to go to church. That's why Jesus said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. We may not always have this, this privilege and as dark as things are getting in America today, it's liable to get to the point where we can't do it at all. Would that surprise you? Not as dark as it is today. Not as anti-religion as, as some of these folks are. Not as anti-God as some of these people are. We took God out of prayer. We, didn't, we, we, we don't have prayer in schools. We don't have all that stuff. But in the 1960s, that was removed. Now we're, we're, uh, we're reaping all the stuff we sold years ago. Is there an area in your life that you need to be shaken? Is there an area in your life that you need to be woke up in? That God has got to have 
because you've not made him a priority in that area. This morning, let God, let God have every part of your life. Let God have your heart. Let God have your job. Let God have your money. Let God have your health. Let every part of our life be infiltrated by God, thus showing the world that we are a people that are dependent upon God. And without Him, we can't do anything because the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And Paul would say on the other side of that, if I don't have God in every part of my life, I can't not do anything. What part of your life do you need God to be invested in today? Whatever it is, bring it to Him this morning. Surrender whatever trouble you're going through this morning to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And maybe it's not even good. But you ask Him this morning to take what part of your life that's in turmoil turned upside down and ask him to use it for his glory ask him to help you through it because god will shake us when he's not our priority let's pray together father speak to our hearts this morning we're your church we're your people we've been blood bought born again Father, did they shake us if it's necessary to get us to have you the Lord of all? Don't let us be satisfied with going to heaven and missing hell and miss out on all the things in life that you could have blessed us with because we chose not to make you Lord of all. Father, the truth of the matter is either you're Lord of all or you're not Lord at all. And there's always areas in our life that we try to figure out on our own. Areas of our life that we think that we've got it. Areas of our life that we think that we're self-made in. But if anything has taught us how quickly in 2020 things have changed, we're not really in charge of anything. We're not really in control. Things this year have happened that have turned us on our head. Things have happened that we didn't have any control of. So, Father, remind us of how much we need you. We need you every day, every minute, every hour, in every area of our lives. Father, if there's an area this morning that we need to surrender to you, give us during this invitation courage to surrender that to you and trust you. including the trouble that we may be facing this morning. Speak to us now as we have a word of invitation. Every head bowed, every eye closed.